Hello everybody! I just discovered something. Did you know you can actually fit in between a pipe on the one side and glass panes on the other side? <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that before. That's that's interesting. Anyways, we're I'm currently escaping from the, the quarry place that we were in last episode. And what I'm currently doing is I'm heading up to start on the new things that we're doing this episode. What we're doing this episode is... We're going to be doing probably two things. One, we're going to be automating the chemical synthesizer because we need to automate that because there's a glitch with the chemical synthesizer from uh, Minechem, at least in the, the version that we're using. Come on, get, 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 get out of the way. Get out of the water before I drown, please. That would be helpful. Come on, up. Okay, I didn't drown. So there's currently a glitch with the chemical synthesizer where you open the inventory to go and like grab items or something and it reduces the power that's in the machine so that's the thing so we're going to be automating that so that we don't have to open it as often and the other thing we're going to be doing that's a, this episode is we're going to be working on a super fast uh if we get the iron for it i think we will but we're going to be working on a super fast cobblestone farm using computer craft and the reason that we're going to be using that is because we can essentially, using Minechem, we can take cobblestone and turn it into any kind of item we want. And so that's that's the idea. So, hopefully you enjoy the video, and here we go! So the first thing on the agenda is we're going to have to actually sleep so that things get brighter around here. Nice. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is putting the floppy disk and the disk drive in there. Alright. So what we're going to be doing is the first thing we're going to be doing is automating the chemical synthesizer because that's really the key to all of this stuff because for this computer craft like super fast cobblestone farm we're going to need... Uh-oh! The engine could explode. It's black. Why is it black? Is it going to explode? Hopefully not. We need some iron. Let's take some iron. This thing will start accepting energy. Take energy out of the engine. And... Ooh, boy. Okay, what do we do? We got a, a black engine there. Uh, it says it's okay. Why does it say it's okay? I don't understand. I don't understand. That's unfortunate. And... Hmm. What can we do to get it to... Uh, to start working again? That's weird. Anyways, enough of that. If it explodes, then we'll, uh, we'll do something about it. <laughs> so... Chemical synthesizer. So what, the first thing we need to do with this chemical synthesizer is automate it. So there's, if you don't know how the automation works, it actually, you can see it very clearly with a furnace. And let's go ahead and head downstairs. And I'm going to quickly automate a furnace so that you can see what's going on. So we need three chests. Three chests. That's would be one, except for the fact that I put it in the wrong place. There we go, we got two chests, and combine that with one more. Where's the rest of the wood? Where did our wood go? I saw it just a second ago. Oh, there's some birch wood. 
There we go. So, make three chests, and then we're going to make some hoppers. And... <laughs> chest, 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 chest. There we go. Hoppers require iron. We need three of them. And then using the hoppers, you can see more clearly what is actually going on with the automation. And it works the same way for most machines in Minecraft. Well, in the, in the mods and stuff. So here we go. So furnace, we don't want that there. Let's put the furnace up here. Up there. So essentially what happens is there are different sides on this block, as you can see. So essentially we got here the top and the side and the bottom is the way it works on furnaces. Every side seems to work the same, if I recall correctly. So what happens, you can go up top and place a hopper on top of a furnace. You can place one on the side, and then you can place one underneath, and we want it to be pointing this way. You can see there's a little pointing thing on the hopper, and the same thing for over here. You can see this hopper is pointing to the furnace. That says that's where it's going to be uh, feeding its items. And let's go ahead and grab this chest. Actually, we need a pickaxe, not a pickaxe. We have a pickaxe. We need an axe. Cobblestone. And a little bit more, actually. Cobblestone. Oh, and we already had cobblestone. Never mind. Never mind. Like that. Oh, what we needed was sticks. That would help. Sticks would be these. Grab two sticks and some cobblestone like that is an axe. There we go. And axe goes there. So, back to this. We grab this chest because it's empty. Nice and empty. And stick the chest there. And then you can see what happens is this furnace, the hoppers run different slots in the furnace. So, essentially, if we were to, let's say, stick an item in the top hopper, then that puts the item down into the furnace into this slot here, which is the slot for items that will be smelted. The same thing happens, let's get some coal. If we were to, let's, let's actually do that for a whole ton of them. So you can see they keep filtering in from the top slot, they keep going into, well, from the top hopper, they keep going into the top slot, and then they, they just keep going, as many as are in the hopper. So that's very useful for you can get this, uh, this hopper has five slots, so if you want to do a lot of smelting of things, you can stick them in there, and they will keep smelting as long as the furnace has room. And so then on this hopper on the side, this side one, if we put a coal in there, you can see that controls this bottom slot there. So we stick coal in uh, on the side, or whatever fuel we're using, and we stick the items we want to smelt on the top, the top controls that, the side controls that. So it's probably kind of obvious at this point that the remaining slot is controlled by the hopper on the bottom. And so they keep going to the chest. So we now have an automatic cobblestone smelter. Well, actually, it can smelt anything. We have an automatic smeltery because of that furnace. So that's really nice. So what we are planning to do today is do the same thing with that machine up there. I don't remember which slot was which, but it has the same idea. Let's go ahead and take these hoppers. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take this chest as well. And might as well stick the extra stone in there. And now let's head upstairs. I think it was the bottom slot. Otherwise, we have some problems. It's going to be more complicated than I was thinking. But I think it's the bottom slot of the thing here, the chemical synthesizer, is what takes the items out. So the idea is, every time we open this inventory, you can see on the right, it says unpowered, it says stored that many RF, 1120 RF. Every time we open that, it is decreasing. And you know what, let's go ahead and break this and reset the engine. Because it looks like it is having some serious difficulties. There we go, engine. We can turn that on any time. So let's go ahead and stick down here. This hopper, let's stick a chest in front, and let's stick the hopper pointing to the chest. 
There we go. So what should happen is the hopper should pull items out of the chemical synthesizer as soon as it has the power to actually produce the items. If I'm doing all this correctly, then we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and stick that in there. Let's go ahead and turn the engine on. And you know what? Let's actually turn this off as well. Because... No, actually, that doesn't work. <laughs> I thought it would keep going for some reason. That's weird. So let's grab this bucket. Let's go ahead and stick it down here so that it goes back into our system down there. And here we go. So you can see this thing is currently operational. And it is currently not outputting items. Oh, that's because it's still charging. So as soon as it's done charging, we should see items. Yes! Iron! In the chest! That's perfect! That's exactly what I was hoping for! Nice! Okay, so this thing has different sides. And I don't remember what the other sides do. I'll have to refresh my memory on that before we do the full automation on it. But the bottom slot is what pulls items out. So as you can see, it's currently working. So this is really nice. Actually, I'm going to test it right now. I'm going to grab another hopper, see if I can figure out which slot pushes items in. That would be great. That would be very great. Let's uh, take this hopper. Stick the stone in there. Grab the hopper and head upstairs. And then we should be able to have a chemical synthesizer that we never need to open unless we're like changing the recipe or something. Because we should have one hopper that pushes the items into it and another hopper that pulls them out. We have the hopper pulling them out, which is very great. Let's try the side. See if the side works. What we need to see is we need to see that when we grab these and stick them in the hopper, they will be going into the chemical synthesis machine. So, we currently have about five stacks left. Let's go ahead and stick that in there, and you can see... Yes! That is in the right slot! Okay, this was a lot easier than I was expecting. That's great! So you can see we just simply stick all the stuff we want in the hopper on the side. It will go right in there. We never have to open the inventory, so it will never get that inventory opening bug. And it will keep sending iron into the chest, which is great because then we can do the iron tripling from that. And let me see. I had some more iron ore downstairs. So now that that thing is working properly, let's go ahead and grab all of the iron ore that we can and triple it. And where is it? where did it go? Is it in this chest up here? Yes, it is. Okay. So we can use this for anything that we want to synthesize. So that's great. And eventually we'll get it fully automated where we can have a machine automatically telling it from the uh, AE2 mod, Applied Energistics 2, we'll have it fully automated so that we can just tell that machine, hey, go and uh, like make this. And then it's like, oh, okay. And then it goes and, uh, and makes a whole bunch of whatever we tell it to, putting the items in itself. But this is the first step in that direction. So that's nice. So anyways, this is currently doing its thing. It's currently decomposing them into iron, uh, whatever this is called. I was going to call it a bottle, but I don't think it's a bottle. So anyways, this is going along. Let's go ahead and stick them in the hopper here. You know what would actually help is to have an extra chest. Do we have an empty chest around here anywhere? Those are not empty. Actually, more likely to be at the end. Yep, like this. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Chest. And go ahead and stick this chest on top of the hopper. And then we can stick all of our extra iron stuff in there, and they will keep going into the hopper, and keep going into the machine, and keep going in there as long as it has power. And this thing is currently using power, so it's making it harder for that thing to do its work. But we should still see it running. 13? Hello? 13? Why is it, uh... It actually does take a lot of power, so maybe that's the deal. This is still recharging. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and and stick these in there. Nice. Oh, and I just opened it again. Great. 
Oh, but it up, went up to 14, so it is working. So that's good. So now, now we have fully automatic chemical synthesizer. This one doesn't seem to have that bug. So that's nice. So anyways, we're doing well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually grab these. I wanted them in the chest there for some reason. And I don't know why, but that's okay. Let's do like that. Stick that in there. Okay, so now we have iron being produced at the speed of a snail, but it's still being produced. It would be produced a lot faster, well, of course, when this thing is done filling, and it's currently at 83%, so it's getting there, but it would be produced a lot faster if we had the proper engines for it and the proper power, and so that is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to start in on improving our power situation. So power situation is we have one engine there which is currently doing its thing and yeah that's that's that but it would help a lot if we had a lot more engines because if we had a lot more engines then we could actually send a ton of power through this pipe all at once and right now you can sort of see that is this thing full now yes that is full now this thing should be working faster so that that would be good. You can see this pipe, this blue line scales to how full the pipe is. So the blue line will keep getting bigger and bigger as we send more power through it at a time until eventually the blue line turns red and then we know that the pipe is at the maximum it can do and so then we need a new pipe that is bigger basically. But until then we, we obviously are nowhere near the capacity of the pipe because we just got this tiny little blue line in there. So what I'm going to do is create more engines, but not yet because there's no point in doing that when we don't have enough fuel to power them all. Let's go ahead and check on our fuel situation downstairs. Let's uh, not die! What did I just say? I said not die. And then what do I do? I go and die. That's, that's not very good. So down the stairs, the conventional way, rather than just like jumping like 10 stories down, which I don't recommend. And I need to actually find where my gear was, although I didn't have very much, but it was very useful, not very much. It would be, okay, those things actually glow, that Certus Quartz, it actually glows in the dark, which is really neat. How many levels up were we? Ah, there is our axe and our pickaxe, and all of our stuff, actually. I think that might be all of it. And any more would be... Let's just make sure it's not up on this level, which it's not. Any more stuff would be down through the hole, which means it would be all the way down at the bottom, which I don't think is worth going after, really. So that's that's the thing. So anyways, our turtles are down there. They have successfully dug the whole thing. Not dug the whole thing, but they've successfully replaced all of the water for us. So that's very nice. And now, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we're going down to check on our power situation. So down here is the quickest way to get to our power. So as you can see, our power system is doing very well. We got currently, it's currently still operational, which is great. We spent quite a while working on that, so it's good. But as you can tell, this tank is empty. This tank is half empty. And this tank is, I can't actually open the tank right now. There seems to be, sometimes I can't open, wait, do I need an empty hand? No, sometimes I can't open it, sometimes I can. I don't understand that. And I also don't understand what that noise is, if you just heard that noise. Anyways, so we currently have in here, that's I think 32 buckets big. And this currently has 15 buckets in it. So essentially we have like 40-ish, 40, 40, uh, more than 40, close to 50 buckets of lava. But then we're done. If we set up a row of let's say 10 engines, then we'll use 10 at a time. And so 50 buckets will go very fast, so we'll need a lot more lava power very quickly. And the other thing is that the, the other thing here 
is, is that we need actually a good way to use Minecam, get lots of materials for Minecam. So the idea that I have is I have an automatic system that I've, I've sort of designed and stuff, which actually will take cobblestone, because cobblestone is like the easiest thing to get in the game, and it will actually take cobblestone and turn it into lava with just the simple few mods that we have right here. And so then we can do that, set that up, I think, on the very lowest floor would probably be what I'm going for down there, if you can even see in there. I can't really tell. So we'll set up a cobblestone generator down there, and that will convert it into lava, and it will fuel this. And the cobblestone can also be used with mine chem to do all kinds of crazy things with mine chem. But we're going to need a ton of cobblestone. Cobblestone is very easy to make. So the, the trouble is not in the actual making of the cobblestone. The trouble, the um, challenge is in making a ton of cobblestone. So it's fairly easy using computer craft to make about 10 cobble per second. But it's not quite so easy to go beyond that. We'll see how far we can go. I'm going to at least go for 10 cobble per second farm. So that's the idea. So in order to do that, we're going to need lots and lots of turtles. We're going to actually need 10 turtles. Every turtle does one cobble per second. And we're going to need to get out of here without drowning as well. Up here. Nice. Okay. So every turtle does 10 cobble per second. No, no, no. Every turtle does one cobble per second. So we'll set up 10 turtles, which we'll set up with an infinite cobblestone generator, which, uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, I'll get to explaining that later. So we'll set up an infinite generator with 10 turtles to do it, and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and make some turtles. How many iron do we have? I'm kind of thinking... I wonder... I wonder what we should do, because we have a whole pile of turtles down at the bottom of the world down there. Come on, get up the jump there. We have a whole ton of turtles down at the bottom down there, just sitting there because they're done the de-flooding of the base. But this one is... Fl actually, this one's flooded with oil. I think I'm going to use the turtles to... Actually, I'm not going to use the turtles. I'm going to use a pump to suck up the oil. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I think I'll go use those turtles. Those are nine turtles. Let's see how many more we can make. We currently have 43. That's actually very good. 43. And that's all, of course, inside. There's a lot more to come. I think I'll leave those for future projects, though. I think I'll just take the nine turtles down there plus seven. Seven iron makes one more turtle. Let's go ahead and make a turtle. Then we have 10 turtles, and then we can do this infinite generator. Gen gen generator. There we go. Or generator, depending on your pronunciation. So we got some stone. We got some redstone. What else did we need? I forget already. We need glass. That's right. Glass panes. Glass panes are not anywhere to be seen. Hmm. You know, you're not actually really usually supposed to see the glass. You're supposed to see what's through the glass. That's the point of glass. If you just wanted to see something, you could uh, use something as simple as uh, a wall. Because <laughs> you can see the wall. If you're going for seeing through something, that's why you would need glass panes. But when you're looking for a glass pane, it is helpful to actually be able to see it. Okay, here we go. We got a computer. And we got... A turtle needs a chest. Let's go ahead and grab some wood for the chest. We've done this many, many times before. And yet I still can't find the wood. <laughs> okay. I think we need to chop another tree down, probably. No, we have some birch somewhere. Yes, birch. There we go. Two birch. Grab a couple of planks, a couple of sets of planks, even. And we got a chest, we got a turtle, there we go. Nice turtle, okay. So, get rid of the extra stuff. We've done this many times before as well. All right, now we have one turtle. We need to go get more turtles that are down underground. 
And you know what we also need to do? Is we also need to be able to get underground. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna grab a ton of cobblestone. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue building the staircase down. And I'll be back with you when we ac actually make it down the stairs. Alright, I've made it down to the basement. And I don't know if you can actually see anything because it's very dark, except for that one pillar. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab these turtles that are scattered randomly around the place. Well, actually not randomly, if you want to be technical. Because they kind of, they followed their predetermined paths and wound up where the, uh, the end of the line was for them, as, as, uh, the saying goes. So, oh, there's more stone here. That leads to almost nowhere. Except there's more tin down there, but we can't actually get it right now. So let's go ahead and get out of there. And continue grabbing the rest of the turtles. We currently have four out of the nine that made their way down. Where are the other ones? The other ones are... Because I, I think there's one that I'm missing. Is there? Unless I've already gotten it. No, I think there's one that I'm... That I didn't find. Let's see. Detective work for a turtle. Detective work for a turtle would probably go very slowly, actually, if you wanna... If you wanna be technical about it, because... Oh, there we go. Because turtles are slow. And so... If they tried to do pretty much anything, it would be slow. Alright, so we got currently our stairs. And now, out we go. And you can actually hear the, um, the rain, because there's a little tunnel to the surface. And here we go. So now let's head back up with these turtles. And as soon as we get upstairs, we can... Uh, that was not well planned. <laughs> because I actually need to go back downstairs, because that is where the farm is going to be. is down near the bottom level of the world. So, let's see. Where did I put that other turtle? Right here. Ten turtles. We need... We don't need extra cobblestone, really. However, we do need to be able to make this farm. Actually, we do need cobblestone to make the farm. So, let's grab a bunch of that. And we need some water and some lava. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that. That would require a bucket. Let's get three iron. Three iron. And you know what? It actually might be good to get two buckets. Because then we can create an infinite water source down there, because I don't think there's any water down underground there. So, here we go. Buckets. And... Nice! So now let's go ahead and head down. We have plenty of lava down there already. Essentially, if you're unfamiliar, you use water and lava, you can make... Uh, several different things, actually. You can make cobblestone, or you can make obsidian, or you can make various things. But anyways, we are currently down here. We need... We're on level 6. Level 5 is down here. There's some mining that I want to do below this, though. I don't know if I want to block this off just yet. I think I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to block this off. So <laughs> let's go ahead and fill in the cobblestone floor, and I'll be back as soon as the, the floor is filled in with cobblestone. You know, something is wrong here. Something is wrong here. We got currently no light, except from that one place. And I'm realizing that's either because there's an effect when you get low enough down that's called like a, a void, void effect or something, where it sort of clouds your vision so you can't see as far when you get too close to the to the ground. And it's called that because if you actually break through the bedrock, which is impossible to do in survival mode, but if you actually break through the bedrock, you fall into the void. And that, so, because you, as you get close to that, that's why it's called the void effect. Or, well, that might be the term that I just, I just made up. But the more likely thing that's going on is this here. You can see that it's raining in our house. <laughs> but you can see that that hole there brings the sunlight in right from the surface and then gets blocked. So I'm going to move this redstone over because we don't need it there. 
and then dig this hole down, and we should see the light lighten up. And the reason for that, yes, it just lit up. Okay, the reason why that works is because Minecraft calculates its light. It has different light levels, so it has, like, for example, which, uh, okay, I don't remember. Oh, okay, I think what it is is this here. No, it's not. I don't actually remember which one of those numbers in in the F3 screen <laughs> actually tells you the light level. So if you, uh, oh, I think it's RL. Yeah, I think it's RL. So you can see right here, we're right underneath the, the sky. It's currently raining, so that might affect it a little bit. But you can see RL, it's on the, the second line from the bottom. RL, I think that stands for real light level or something. So essentially, what that does, it says 15. That means you have a light level of 15 here. As you can see, if we move over a block, we have a light level of 14 and 13, and it keeps going like that. When you get to a light level of 7 or less, then mobs can spawn, monsters and stuff, and, and we don't want that. Except that we're in peaceful mode, so that's not a problem. But that's the way it... I could probably explain it better, actually, if I had a torch like this. So, let's see. This whole thing is lit up. But as you can see, like, right next to the torch, if I were to stand here, that's a light level of 14. And I think, actually... Oop, I think, actually, if I put the torch back, that would help. <laughs> okay, so, I, yeah, it's a level of 14 right beside a torch light level. And so if we go one block away from the torch... You can see it goes down to 13. We go another block away, it goes down to 12, 11, 10, like that, and it keeps going down one block. I think, actually, you can see this very clearly if I turn off smooth lighting, because smooth lighting kind of smooths it out. So you can kind of see, here it just looks very bright, but as you, as you move farther away, you can see in between the blocks, like this block is a lot darker than this block, which is a lot darker than this block, and stuff like that because it goes down one light level, and then eventually you get down to a light level of... Oh, you can see it very clearly there. You get down to a light level of... Down here is zero. And this one says it's one for some reason, and, and it looks darker, so I don't know why. But anyways, you get here to a light level of zero. Or up to a, a higher light level. Anyways, that's the idea. I'm going to turn smooth lighting back on. There we go... So the reason I was explaining that is because it calculates that from a light source. So Minecraft will calculate how much light is coming in relative to a light source. So like a torch, if we place a torch down, then every block away from the torch gets subtracted by one. What we've got here, we're a long ways from the surface, but the sun... It looks like it's nighttime right now, actually. But this normally... The sun shines down, straight down, this tube here. Every block in this tube is directly connected to the sun, essentially. And so this, this particular tunnel that we have is always the maximum light level. And then we calculate down from that. So we go down 15, we go down like um, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7... Six and like that, and so it does get a little dark over here, but it, at the same time, it is still bright enough that you can really see what you're doing. So, anyways, that's how that light system works. So, anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're going to get the turtles here, and uh, I actually don't know how long this episode's ep getting tongue tied again. Haha. <laughs> okay, I actually don't know how long this episode's been going for, so that is a thing. Let's get the framework set up. Let's do the actual programming next episode. So let's go ahead over here. I'm going to dig into which wall can I dig into? I think the other quarry with the water and everything, I think it's over there. So let's dig into this wall. And let's go ahead and make an infinite water source over here. Like that. Oh, 
there's uh there's bedrock in the way. Ah, right there. That would work. So we can like I did in the last episode. I think it was the last episode. We can do like that. If we fill that in, you can clearly see if it's uh, bright enough to see. It might not actually be bright enough. But you can see that there is... You know what? I'm going to go grab a torch from up there. You can see that we created an infinite water source. So that's very nice. So torch over here. Let's grab this torch. And torch. And down we go. And... Stick it on this side. There we go. So now you can see there's a uh, infinite water source. And so what we can do is we can just keep picking water out as many times as we like. So let's go ahead and start building with that. We have some lava somewhere in the area. And we're going to build a cobblestone generator. So how a cobblestone generator works, generator, how a cobblestone generator works is essentially you go here, you get water and lava to mix in the right order and then you essentially use that that essentially creates cobblestone well actually that does create cobblestone so that's nice so we need it to be a little bit taller i think i think like that i built this the wrong way that's not the way i was intending to build that okay i'm gonna have to tear this down actually a part of it at least just this part and my pickaxe is about to break. Hopefully it doesn't break before we can finish the project. Because that would be inconvenient. Like this. There we go. And we need a block to actually climb up. Actually, two blocks to climb up. There we go. So, we got here. This is the basic design for a cobblestone generator. So, what we do essentially is we grab some water. We stick the water in the one side, like that, and we stick the lava in the other side. Let's go ahead and grab some lava. Now, water and lava, if you put water on top of lava, is there actually lava over here? I don't see any. If you put water on top of lava, then it creates obsidian, and it's the lava gets used up, and that's that. However... Uh, let's actually break this so that we can get through easier. However, if you put lava on top of water, you get cobblestone. And if you do that infinite uh, water trick thing, if you shelter the water... Let's go ahead and find some other source of lava, like over here. If you go ahead and... It's somewhere here. I think this is a dangerous idea to do. Let's go ahead and get to some other place where it's slightly less dangerous. Like, I think there's a, a lava... I think there's a pool of lava around here somewhere. In the ground. Okay. Right there. I thought I almost fell in it, but apparently not. That's good. So, here we go. So, let's go ahead and grab two buckets while we can. Two buckets. There we go. Now, let's head back over. So, the idea is you shelter the water so that it can't be completely destroyed by the lava. And then you shelter the lava so that it can't be completely destroyed by the water. And then there, you have a good combination to be able to do some things. You know, we could actually avoid this whole dangerous area if we just go here and just dig right through the wall... And break our pickaxe. Great. That's not what I was hoping for. Oh, you know what? This might work. There we go. Now I'm through. So here we go. We get lava in one side and water in the other side. So that's just the lava flowing down. So you can see here, there, well, you sort of can see. It's uh, not, it's in cobblestone, but anyways. You can see the water is currently here. It's completely sheltered from the lava that is over there. And that is the idea. And then what happens is, if I remember this quite correctly, so the water flows down there. The lava is flowing down there. Then what you want, as long as these two blocks, these two source blocks are still there, you can keep this going infinitely. 
So let's go down here and let's say so don't have a pickaxe. Let's uh, get a pickaxe <laughs> would be helpful. Actually, I think I'm going to go for the pickaxe later. So if we break this, which will actually take a fair amount of time, seeing as we don't have a pickaxe. But if we break this, we should see the water do that and the lava do that. So essentially what happened there is I need to break this one instead. So essentially what happens is the water is the stationary tube. Let's fill in the bottom block with cobblestone. There we go. So the water is, is stationary, sort of. Like, it's, it's flowing water, but anyways, it stays there, is what I'm trying to say. The lava moves. So you can see, sort of, when I break this, the lava, after it uh, decides to move, it will move over and contact, like, it will hit the water. And then what happens after the lava has run into the water is it will essentially get sorry just distracted myself <laughs> as soon as the water as soon as the lava hits the water it turns into cobblestone so that's the idea is they're never used up and they keep producing cobblestone so you can create an infinite cobblestone generator and so that's really nice so the idea that we're going for here is that same idea except we're going to expand it so we're going to build over this way a whole bunch and we're gonna have turtles breaking the cobblestone so the idea being here the turtle will be here in place of this blo block so the turtle will just go and break the cobblestone that is above it and that's that's that and so then the idea is we have a row of turtles down like that and we have the turtles keep breaking the cobblestone the lava keeps replenishing the co cobblestone. There's a chest at the end, and we're good to go. We got some things happening all over the place, and it's very good. So that's the idea. So we're gonna, I'm going to build up the frame for this right now. And then I'm going to actually fill in the lava and the water and, the, uh, and replace my pickaxe off camera. And then we'll come back next time for the finishing of the project, basically. So... Let's get this like that and give ourselves a way to actually get up. There we go. And like that. So we need the walls. We need to make it like 10 wide. Over here. And how wide is that actually? That is, so the turtle will be here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 if we include that one. And then we need more because we're going to make this 10. So we need to dig that way. That's actually, we're going to be sending a quarry through there. Actually, no, we're not because we're going to be sending the quarry back there. Okay, so that's good. Hmm. Okay, so I guess we can't do the 10 setup. I'm not going to go for the 10 setup just in case because I don't know what I'm doing with quarries for sure yet. So we'll see. But anyways, this should be good. Continue filling that in. Continue filling that in. Like that. And that should not have gone there. Actually, it should have. We need it to go across the middle. So then, then the idea here is to get out. The idea here is just simply fill in this with lava. Fill in this with water. Fill in down there with turtles. And then they just keep pumping cobblestone through. And then we got, like, plenty of cobblestone. This would be a... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be a seven cobble per second farm. So that's, that's very good. And we can expand it later. Once we get that quarry taken care of, we have more room back there. We, I should probably have built it back there. We might end up moving it in the future. But anyways, that's the idea. So I'm going to go get a pickaxe, and I'm going to go fill in the water and the lava off camera, and be back next episode, where we work on actually programming this thing. So, 
yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed the video, and yeah, we'll be back next time to program that thing. So, see you later. Bye-bye.